It's a beautiful mid-September day. It's about 27 degrees Celsius. And previously, this avenue would have been full of pedestrians and cyclists and children and elderly people and skateboarders and roller skaters and street musicians and patios. But now, look at this. Look at the cyclists hanging on for dear life as they get sandwiched between that giant bus and that giant truck. And here, I was wondering if that guy was gonna turn into me because he had his turn signal on. Uh, but I'm just kind of on high alert here as I ride because as you can see, it's not nearly as pleasant an experience. There still are some cyclists taking advantage of this warm day, but we are relegated to the sides. And on the sidewalks, you see there still are some people, of course, but would there be more if all this pavement in front of me was ours to, uh, to walk on? My argument is yes. And my argument, in fact, is that we should have kept this pedestrianized at the very least for another month and perhaps for the entire year. There has been an effort made to tell the city of Montreal that they want, we the bikers and pedestrians want this to be kept pedestrianized all year round. There was recently a, as I wait for this FedEx guy to pass, there was recently a, a sort of protest, but it, you know, it was a casual protest because what it was was a few hundred people on bikes and walking just kind of did an impromptu, uh, you know, they, they all went at the same time and forced a brief pedestrianization of this avenue once more. This was, I think, the first weekend after they had closed it. And the message is clear. This was Montrealers telling the city, hey, we don't want this closed. We liked when we had this avenue to enjoy. And as for all the cars and trucks, well, guess what? They have pretty much every other street in the city to enjoy. So on this main shopping street, which I'm actually going to turn around and show you a brief look at one of the tables that's here on the sidewalk. There are a couple of people stopped to look at things, but imagine if there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people walking by. I have a feeling they might have a few more customers. Now, to be fair, because I do want to present different opinions here, and I am aware that I have a bias because I'm not a driver in Montreal, I'm a biker. So obviously I will prefer things that prioritize the cyclists. To be fair, I did have one conversation with someone who was in favor of opening the street back to cars. Just by chance, I went to a furniture store and I bought, uh, I had to buy this little footstool thing. So my object was quite small. It was something I could bike home with. But, you know, this was a furniture store. They sold a lot of bigger objects too. Couches, tables, stuff like that. And just conversationally, I asked, the, the guy who was working there was very friendly, and I asked him, you know, what do you think of the pedestrianization, do you wish it had stayed like that? 
and he said, oh, no, no, I, <laughs> I hated it because, you know, so many of his main target audience were people who needed to put bigger objects into trucks. The big ticket objects um, require vehicles. But on the other hand, what about all the coffee shops? What about all the grocery stores? What about all the restaurants and bars, which are relying on people passing by on a hot day and saying, you know what, I do, I do want to get that iced coffee. I do want to get that beer. I do want to get that, you know, bowl of fruit from the grocery store. How much more money are they making? Based on people who are walking through or cycling through. I can tell you that in my own case, um, I have been taking other routes more recently. I have been, I wouldn't say I'm avoiding Mount Royal Avenue, but if you look in front of me, I, I, I prefer to take a side street rather than look at the back of a big blue truck and worry if some driver behind me might hit me and ruin my day. There will be different perspectives here, but I believe, based on what I've seen, living in Plateau and visiting this avenue frequently, I believe that it's a net positive. I mean, look at that bookstore that we just passed. How many tourists who otherwise would have stayed in Old Montreal or stayed in downtown came here specifically because they heard, hey, there's a really cool shopping street where you can walk down and you can, uh, you can hear street musicians, you can try local restaurants, you can have that Montreal experience without worrying about dodging traffic. If you have your own perspectives on this, if you think it simply won't work in the wintertime because everyone will want to be at home or in their warm cars, if you think that there are other perspectives like that of the furniture store guy that I have not fully considered, then I would like to hear from you as well. Look at this, what is happening here? I had to, uh, I had to jump on the sidewalk to, to avoid that guy. Wow. But you know what, I almost forgot. I don't need to imagine what it would be like to still have the pedestrian street. Because up here, just beyond Rue Saint Denis, they still have it. And I don't know if this is going away soon or if this relaxing, calm way of life will continue into the colder months as well. All I know is that as someone who likes a more relaxing pace, seeing this is night and day compared to the big trucks and buses that I was fighting against. <laughs> on the other side of St. Denis. Okay, in the name of clarity, I actually just looked it up on the Montreal website, and it says that the first stretch I was going down was June 5th to August 26th. The following stretch, which goes up the hill from St. Denis to St. Laurent, continues until August 
or sorry, until October 14th. So that's nice. We have about another month. And if I'm not mistaken, this one actually stayed open slightly past August 26th. I think they kept it until the first week of September. So that just goes to show that adjustments can be made. Of course, now that they've already closed it and, you know, taken away the public uh, gardens and stuff like that, it's going to be harder for them to uh, do a backtrack and change it. So maybe if we're talking about future changes, it would be next summer we're looking at. Uh, or maybe we can convince them to extend the upper portion, at least for, for this year. Uh, whatever the case, if this is something that is important to you, uh, I encourage you to leave a comment and maybe this video can serve as a kind of visual evidence to any people from the city of Montreal that there is a desire for pedestrianization to continue. I know that even on a cold snowy day I would be walking down it. If you would be too, leave a comment, let people know. I think I've said all I have to say. I'm going to leave you with a few more moments of this peaceful walking street. As always, I'm Dan, and I will catch you next time.